For your mercy never fails me. <laughs> in the darkest night, I am safe in your hands. That's right. From the moment that I wake up right. until I lay my head, for I will live in the goodness of God. Amen. <laughs> Why do I want to forget the words right now? <laughs> All my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God amen I love your voice. Let's see. Yes, Lord. Bless you, Jesus. Why am I going blank on this? And the chorus. Hmm? Do you sing and the, the chorus? chorus. <laughs> yes, your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Yes, your goodness is running after. It's running after yes, it me. Thank you, Lord. With my life poured out, I surrender now. I give you everything. Amen. Amen. Yes, your goodness is coming after. It's coming after me. Yes, your goodness is coming after. It's coming after me. Sorry, guys. Singing. Amen. Amen. So I can agree with me. I will. I was just thinking today I heard that song. Yeah. Do you say the song again? I think it's Yeah. I hate the one I get nervous. Hey. Sometimes it ain't the words. Sometimes it's just it's being real. It, it's forgetting the words, but it don't matter. Because you're doing it to God anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just such a powerful. And, and the good thing about God, God is never up in heaven going, oh, you blew that one. <laughs> Thank God. I mean, we, we think that sometimes, but yeah. thank, thank you to your kids. It, and, and I remember when I was a kid, we used to, but they don't do as much as, remember we used to make stuff. Yeah. I tell you how old I am, we made ashtrays in school. <laughs> right? I mean, come on, dude. You, they shut the school down now if you made an ashtray. Oh, boy. And we made all this stuff, and it was just horrible. Can I get, I'm talking about my stuff. Your stuff may have been great. Now, my ashtray looked like it fell out of the back of the my, truck somewhere. My macaroni necklaces were beautiful. Oh, I made some macaroni yes. art, dude, or be hanging in a museum somewhere. Yes. Uh, it's beautiful. Michelangelo has some good stuff right now. I'm just kidding. I have no artistic skills. <laughs> but you remember when, when you give it to your mom, she thought, I mean, she let on like that was the greatest thing it was, ever. It was. It was to nice. her, yeah. because you made it out of love. That's right. She didn't say, son, you stink. It's just where it came from. I hope this ain't your job. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got to realize that's how God is. He's not looking as we look at it, thank God. He's looking at the effort that went into it, the love that went into it. 
how much it took for you to get from there to here to do it in front of everybody simply because you just love God. Amen. And I want to do it. Amen. So if you're singing as an ugly ashtray, <laughs> man, I ain't got nothing else to compare it to. <laughs> it is sitting on God's mantle because he's proud of it. Right. That's the way we always got to remember. Like Jeannie said, we do it as unto God. That's right. And God is proud of you before you ever get up. Anytime you do it, though, you're not doing it for God to make a check. It's yeah. Okay. God's proud of you before you got off the padded pew. <laughs> That's the way you got to look at it. If you see me up there in the choir, just think ugly ashtray. That's right. <laughs> so now on, when you mess something up, Ugly ashtray. That'll be our cover. Oh, no, I'm back there behind the door. He done spoke it into existence. Yeah, we got no taste. I expect you to stand no, 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 next no, no, no. to me. Yeah. No, 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 no. You yep. tell all them, I said, we got it on tape. Yep. Everybody, on, everybody on Facebook going, what's a tape? You're going to be required to hold, yeah. hold my paper for this me. This dude, oh. I'm going to make you do it. All right, you got your Bible now. I'll try, to, I'll try not to keep you real long. Just a little something kind of been on my heart, very familiar scripture. Y'all know this. I still have to say it every week. Uh, got your Bible not go to the book of Judges. <coughs> Sixth chapter. When you get there, you'll, know, you'll realize how familiar it is. Oh. Get there, say amen. Judges chapter 6. I'm so tired. I don't even, I can't even pay attention. Here we go. All right, is everybody there? Amen. All right, let's pray. Y'all ready? Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We always thank you for an opportunity to come into your house. Oh, God, we always thank you, Father, that you loved us before we ever loved you. Uh, we thank you that it's your love that uh, keeps us going, your love that wakes us up, your love that lays us down, Father. And I pray uh, tonight as we come together, let us come one mind, one accord, Father. Let your word fly, uh, flow freely. Uh, let your word find a place in each and every heart here. Uh, Father, and I just pray uh, that your word be presented in such a way, Father, that the smallest child would understand it, uh, Father, and it would increase us, it would uh, give us more knowledge, uh, it would inspire us, Father, to go out and, and be better, uh, for you. We thank you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read. A, uh, I'm going to start chapter 6 1. I'm just going to kind of read through these and I'll go ahead and give you a warning. If I say the word I can't pronounce, I'm just going to skip over it. Uh, don't nobody jump up and say I'm taking away from or adding from. I'm just telling you, I can't pronounce it. I ain't going to waste your time and my time. 6 1 says, And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord delivered them into the hand of Midian seven years. And the hand of Midian prevailed against Israel. And because of the Midianites, the children of Israel made them uh, the dens, which are in the mountains and caves and strongholds. So in basic English, ninth grade dropout, they sinned, and God held them accountable. Amen? That's still true today. Amen. Uh, the way, there's still a wage to be paid for sin, uh, there's still the consequence for sin. Uh, thank God we got a forgiving God. Thank God that Jesus will forgive me when I ask him. Uh, but you know what? You still got to pay for sin sometimes. Amen. There's consequences for every action. Can I get amen? amen? It was that way back here and it's still that way today. So they had sinned. Uh, they went into bondage. Uh, if, if you're living in sin, you're in bondage. Yes, you are. That sin... Is your master. Amen. That sin owns you. Amen. Yeah. Whatever it is, from the smallest thing to the biggest thing, uh, God ain't got up there, He ain't got a sliding scale of sin. That's right. Amen. Amen. It ain't like He, he slides a rule up there, Chris, to see where you know. He's got one rule, and it says sin. And it falls in there. And when you're in that sin, any sin, you're in bondage to it. Amen. Whether you want to admit you are or not, it controls you. That's true. And, and it'll take you places you ain't meant to be. And it'll keep you there longer than you ought to be. And it'll make you go places that you don't. They hear they were hid out in caves in a mountain uh, because of their sin. 
don't know who that's for, but I'll throw that in for free. That ain't what I come to tell you. You all know you had sin when you got here. You don't need me to tell you. Can I get amen? Amen. And so it was when Israel had sown that the Midianites came up and the Malachites and the children of the east, even they came up against them and they encamped against them and destroyed them and destroyed the increase of the earth till they are come unto Gaza and left no substance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they came up with their cattle and their tents and they came as grasshoppers for multitude. For both they, had, they and their camels were without number and they entered into the land to destroy it. See what one sin done? Yep. Amen. We, uh, we think, and I say we because it's all of us. I'm talking to everybody here and everybody watching. We think sometimes it's just a little something. It's never just a little something. The Bible says a, le a little leaven will leaven the whole loaf. Amen. Yeah. Uh, you take the holiest person in the world and you add one little sin, there's still sin there. That's right. Amen. And like I said, sin, it, it's a domino effect. Amen. And it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Amen? Amen? Now, like I said, thank God I can ask Jesus and he'll come and take me out of it. Just like he's fixing to do right here. And Israel, verse 6, was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They were reaping what they sowed. Amen? I hate to go 16, 11 King James on you tonight, but that's what they were doing. They were reaping what they sowed. They sowed the sin, and they were reaping a harvest of the sin that they sowed to. Yeah, Amen. Hey, some of us right now are reaping some stuff we don't want to reap. Amen. And we asking God why. Amen. And God, and if we're honest, I guarantee when you ask God why something comes to mind that you've done. Amen. Yes. He'll tell you. And God's like, oh, remember this? Yes. I don't want to remember that, God. Amen. And we think sometimes, and this ain't even a message, I'm just throwing this in for y'all for free because somebody need to hear it. I got a lot of amen, so thank you, Lord. Sometimes we think that once we ask God to, to, to forgive us for that sin, yes, it is erased. But that does not mean that we don't have to pay for it. Right. <laughs> That's right. We, we, think, we think that when I, I ask you to forgive me, man, you are to... Just forgive me and forget about it and all's good. It don't work that way. What we got to realize is, is when we do things, it, it's a reflection of us. It's a reflection of our church. It's a reflection of your wife or your husband. Amen? Amen. Yeah, your kids, even your kids can answer for it. But the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. Amen? Thank God, Sean, and even though i got to pay for my sins, even though I'm in my sins and I've messed up, I thank God for a time of reckoning where I realized, mm -hmm. hey, and I've paid my debt, that I cry out to God and here he comes. Amen? Now, hey, sometimes God will leave you there till you take care of what you got to take care of. Now, we think there, there's no consequences. That's like kind of like you ever, and I know it ain't none of y'all, but just y'all play with them for here a minute. You ever said something about somebody? You ain't got to raise your hand. You ever said something about somebody and they find out? Oh, yeah. And then you have to go tell them or apologize You gotta pay for that. And that's a hard thing to do. Amen? When you know. And it ain't like you say, Well, Lord, I shouldn't have said that. Forgive me. And Lord goes to their house and wipes their memory clean. No, it's called eating crow. Right? Yep. <laughs> well, Chad asked for forgiveness. Let me take that. It ain't like men in black where God's gonna pull that little thing out and click it and your memory's gone. <laughs> Amen. Hey, it'd be nice sometimes. But see, sometimes. The Lord will forgive us, yeah, but we got to go make that right. 
They cried out to the Lord because of the Midianites. See, they realized they had a problem. They had suffered long enough. They brought that problem before God. Verse 8 says that the Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt, and I brought you forth out of the house of bondage, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, and out of the hand of all that oppressed you, and drave them out from before you, and gave you their land. And I said unto them, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the God of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. In other words, I've done all this stuff, but you didn't listen. Amen? Amen. And the Lord and there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was I ain't even gonna try to say that. I'm just skipping over all that until you get to Gideon. And Gideon threshed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. Yep, he was hiding. He's hiding now. He was threshing wheat in a wine press. Think about that. What goes in a wine press? Grapes. He's threshing wheat. So he's already scared. They're going to come take my stuff. Yep. Amen? I, I got to do it over here where nobody can see it because I'm, I'm scared. Oh, Verse 12 says, And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. I came to tell somebody tonight that God didn't come here tonight to tell you what you're doing. He didn't come here tonight to tell you what you are right now. No, he didn't. He came to tell you tonight what you're going to be. He received that. He did not come tonight to tell you that you are what you see yourself as. I don't care what, and somebody needs to hear this tonight. You are not what you think you are. And God does not see you how you think you are. Thank God. Everybody in here should have said amen on that one. Amen. God is looking at what you are in the kingdom. Amen. amen. Hey, when you are weak, God sees strong. Mm -hmm. When you're ignorant, Jesus hey, when God, when you see ignorant or dumb or whatever other words you want to throw in there, God sees wisdom. Yes, He does. When you see weakness, He sees, he sees strong. When you see not enough, He sees more than enough. When you see unworthy, He sees worthy. Amen. Gideon was a coward right then before God showed up. See, we got to learn to listen to what God's saying. Let God come and call you what he wants to call you. Don't argue. Don't fight back. Just receive it. Amen. And get out of where you're at and go to where God's trying to take Ooh, you. Preach. Hey, that's what you... If he never left the wine press, and I'm getting ahead of myself, if he would have never left the wine press, he would have always been a coward. That's right. But he would. He said, you know what? I'm going to go with what God said. I'd ask you tonight, are you willing to go with what God says? Ooh, yes, God. Yes. Are you tired of looking at yourself through your eyes? That's right. Yes, Lord. That's right. Hey, God didn't come here tonight. That's, why, that's about all I got. It's going to be short. I told you that. I come to tell you tonight, God did not come to agree with you. No, he did not. Amen. Can I get amen? Somebody already got excited about it. God didn't come tonight to agree with you. God ain't going to agree with you that you're weak. God ain't going to agree with you that you're not worthy. God ain't going to agree with you that you're not enough. God come tonight to say this is how you are, but that's not what you're going to be. Receive. 
Amen. You may be a coward in your own eyes, but when I look, I don't see a coward. I see a mighty man of valor. I see what you're going to accomplish instead of what you're doing right now. Amen. Thank you, God. Amen. So, hey, tonight you got to get out of where you're at. You got to get out. It's up to you. You're going to listen to one voice or the other. You're going to listen to yourself. You're going to listen to the world. You're going to listen to what everybody else puts on you. Or you're going to listen to what God says. Amen. And I'd rather listen to God. I would too. Amen. Because you know what? You read the story. I'm not going to read it all. It's already 8.15. I'm not going to keep you all night. You go ahead and read the story. See, he believed what God said. And he began to walk in God what God said. And guess what he became? He became the very thing that God told him he would be before he ever got there. That's right. Simply because he believed and he moved. That's, that's what I'm talking Amen. about. Hey, Lord. he wanted signs. Yeah. You know what people say? Well, you can't ask. He did. And you know what God did? He gave him his signs. He said, I'm going to do whatever it takes that you believe exactly what I'm telling you. Yes. I think about I think about when when, when Jesus came back from, from the dead there. And he went and seen the disciples. And all of them was there but Thomas. I'll close in a minute. That's all I want to say. God didn't come to see you tonight for what you are. He came to speak something to you. And if you'll listen tonight, I believe he's already talked to you. But I think about old Thomas. Everybody calls him Doubting Thomas. He gets a bad rap, man. He can't defend himself. But all the disciples other than him went and seen Jesus. And, and, and I, I joke all the time, it's like a good church service. If you don't go, 78 people are going to call you and tell you how good it was. That's right. People you ain't talked to in a year. Woo, boy, should have been there last night. It is awesome. Right. You're thinking, shut up. Right. <laughs> it could not have been that good, right? It, 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 it wasn't that good. You're just saying that because I wasn't there. Right. Of course. So here was Thomas. Oh, Thomas, man, Jesus. There he was. Had the holes in his hands. That was awesome. Thomas like, you know what? I don't care how good you say it is. I ain't believing it until I stick my finger in there. Mm -hmm. Now, Jesus, Jesus could have said, forget you, Thomas. Should have showed up. See, Jesus came back. What did he come back for? He come back for Thomas. That's right. All the other ones had done seen him. And he come back and he said, you know what? If that's what, now hear me. If that's what it takes for you to believe, Thomas, I'm willing to do it. Yep. Go ahead, touch it. Go ahead, stick your finger in it. You're important enough to the kingdom of heaven that I will come back and do whatever it takes that you'll believe. Amen. See, Gideon had to step out of what he had made himself. Yep. Hear me, he had to step out of what consequences had made him. Yep. What life had made him. Mm -hmm. See, that was his life. We, we sat around and people sat around all the time, gloom, despair, and agony on me. I can't have nothing nice. Uh, and, and hey, if it's offends you, I don't care. Turn the channel. Mama didn't hug me enough, and Daddy didn't spend enough time with me, and I didn't get to do this, and I didn't get to do that. Hey, get over it. Right. Yeah, come on. Amen. Amen. Get over it. Life goes on. Amen. You can remain in that, and that's what you'll always be. You'll be a victim, and you'll be this, and they'll owe you that, or one day you can step out of that. Right. So what if my earthly daddy didn't do enough? I got a heavenly father that does more than enough. Amen. You can take my last name down here and it may not get you a whole lot, but I can take my Heavenly Father's last name and he'll give me everything because he owns it all. Amen. you got to realize it's how we let Jesus call us. Not how you call yourself. How many people in here, be honest, how many people watching right there feel worthy enough to stand up and sing a song in God's house? All the time. Now, sometimes, man, you, you feel like you swing out over hell on a dried-out corn husk until the devil will bring it on. Right. <laughs> right? right? Hey, sometimes that's how you feel. A dried-up corn husk. 
Corn heck yeah, man, that's what I'm talking about. That statement in my life. Don't even understand what that means. Nobody so, understands I that. Do. I mean, I don't Tanya do. got it. Yeah. But then sometimes, I got you, man. You feel like you're not even worthy. Amen. Now, who are you going to believe? I'll go ahead and tell you. You ain't worthy. Amen. According to you, you're not worthy according to anybody else. If they drawed up a, a worthiness contract, Sean, mm -hmm. ain't none of us in here could sign it. Mm -hmm. But you know what? When I feel it, when that spirit rises up in me, on Wednesday night, on Sunday morning. I ain't got to be worthy. Amen. I don't go on what I hear. I go on a man that tells me I'm worthy. Amen. Amen. So, hey, same way when you sing. Even though you don't want to, there's something in you that compels you to go do it. Whether you forget the song or not, you get up and sing it anyway. Why? Because in that moment, you're not somebody that forgot the words. You're a child of the king, and you're doing exactly what God told you to do. That's what you got to always remember. You can call yourself something or you can let God call you something. And you'll believe one voice or the other. And why not believe God? Why not? Amen. It's just as easy. Because God, how many people in here know that God cannot lie? He sure can. This book right here says it's impossible for God to lie. So if God can't lie, and he come and called Gideon, a mighty man of valor, while he was hiding out in a threshing floor, then what had, he, he had no choice. Hear me. He didn't have an option other than to be a mighty man of valor. Amen. Because God spoke it. So whatever you're telling yourself tonight, whether you're sitting here, whether you're watching our, this may not be earth shattering. You know what? I don't care. It's what God told me to say. Boy, whether you're telling yourself something, shut up. Amen. I'm just trying to be nice. You need to shut up and quit trying to tell God Amen. what he made you to be. Because you will always sell yourself in the kingdom short. Amen. Everybody in here has got that I'm not good enough mentality. Everybody in here thinks you, well, if you'd have been with me yesterday, you wouldn't say no word and listen to me preach. Amen. Right? Amen. If you'd have seen me at what I'd done yesterday, you wouldn't let me sing in your church. Right. I ain't got no horse in that race. That's between you and Jesus. Right. We gotta realize if Jesus tells you to sing, then sing. And it ain't nobody else's business. Because I may call myself one thing, but Jesus still calls me a pastor. He still calls you a singer. He still calls you those things. And he can't lie. But you can. Hey man, we lie to ourselves all the time. Every time you tell yourself you're not worthy, you're a liar. Every time you tell yourself you're less than, you're a liar. Every time you tell yourself you're not what God told you you are, you're a liar. That's the way you got to look at it. I'm going to listen to what God says. I ain't basing it on my circumstances. Now imagine poor old Gideon. You talking to me, God? Hide now. Little weak person. And God called him this. Amen? But we're the same way. We got to realize God don't care what you look like. God can take a donkey. Amen, set somebody straight. So next time you get high and mighty thinking you're this great preacher, remember God used the donkey. Hey Amen. That's how I think about it. Hey, that old calico cat walks around in the parking lot out there. God send that thing in here one day if he wanted to. He sure will. He said, hey, you go sit down. I got a cat. <laughs> I mean, we, we laugh and we think it's crazy, but imagine when that donkey come up. What's in this water? No. Whatever God says, you are. Quit arguing. True. Quit selling yourself short. Because when you sell yourself short, you're selling God in the kingdom short. Because God ain't made no mistakes. 
God didn't say, oh, my bad, Gideon, let me go to the next threshing floor. Maybe I'm in the wrong one. No, he knew exactly where he was at. He knew exactly who he was talking to. And whatever he's told you, if you're sitting here or watching right there, whatever he's told you, that's what you are. You just got to accept it. Like I said, go back to my previous statement, and I love y'all when I say it, but just shut up. <laughs> and listen. A wise man once told me, and I'll close with it, uh, you can't learn with your mouth open. Yes. Amen. Amen. That wise man was my grandpa. <laughs> Amen. 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 Cutting out of your ear and putting your mouth open. So just think if we could close our mouths. Now, anybody else in here need help with that sometimes? All the time. What if I could close my mouth and close my mind and listen only to God? How much better would we be? Oh, but see, we think there's some magic something to this. Yes, we, we think it's... Uh, Y'all remember the Rubik's Cube? Yes. I never, other than taking the stickers off and putting them, I could never get that thing figured out. <laughs> then the stupid stickers would fall off and everybody know I cheated. <laughs> Y'all tell us it's still a sore spot. <laughs> but well, one color, all color. that's the way we are. We think it's this huge puzzle. And we, we got to do this and turn it here and four turns there. And speaking of the Rubik's Cube, you see this one dude on TV and he fixed it in like eight seconds. Yes. And I'm thinking, well, brother, this dude's really good. I'm dumber than I thought I was. Right. And right now, Sean, I'm leaning toward me being dumber. <laughs> yeah. And then like you said, you know, you still believe somebody needs to be. I'm like, I'm going to punch this dude in the head. Take this eight second Rubik's Cube guy. But see, what we got to realize is people are different. Mm -hmm. you, whether it took me 80 days or taking the stickers off. And it took him eight seconds, still looked the same. Mm -hmm. There's no puzzle. That's what I'm getting at. There is no secret. There is no puzzle to this thing. Sure. We complicate it. Yeah. It's basically listening to what God says. Think about it. Our whole walk with God is doing what He says. Amen. When He says and how He says. Man, if we could get that in our head, <coughs> how much simpler would our life be? Oh, I think of Noah when he built the ark. God come down said, hey man, build a boat. That's not exact translation. That's my dropout translation. And here's how I want you to build it. It's got to be this big, this wide, pitch it here and there, put windows here and there, get to, get your family, it's going to rain. He said, okay. He started building. Now, I reckon how many days he woke up and said, I don't want to build that stupid boat no more. It ain't rained. Probably a lot. <laughs> yeah, probably like after the second day. That's the way we are. Where's the rain at? Right. He didn't even know what rain was at that point. I know. Right. It never rained until then. What is this what rain is you speak of? But he done it anyway. Whether he felt like it. You can't tell me some people what they say, like 75 to 120 years. It, now, I get bored after like two days. Imagine building that. How many people in here preach or sing and you want to learn a song and if you ain't learned it in the first two hours, well, I guess it just ain't for me, for me to sing this thing. <laughs> Stupid song. Yes, it is. Right? Right. Gonna preach. You, 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 some of them messages, they just drop. Boom, there it is, all at one time. Woo, thank you, Lord. Some of them, man, is like labor. And, and, you know, when you went to 48 different places in the Bible and you ain't got no farther along, you're like, well, maybe this is wrong. No. Listen to what God says. Because when we stop, we miss out on what God has in store. Yeah. See, Gideon, hear me now, even if he'd have hid out in the wine press, he'd still been a mighty man of valor. Say, how you get that? Because God told him he was. Amen. Amen. Now, he had to get out the wine press to step into what God told him would be. Just like we got to get out of where we're at to step into what God's told us we're going to be. 
You are what God said you are right now. Right where you're at. I don't care if you're broken, that ain't you. If God's told you you're not broken, that ain't you. I don't care how bad it is, how much of a shamble it is, how much of a failure you think you are, that ain't you. You just got to get out of it. Amen. Amen. All you got to do is get out of it. And if it takes asking God for a sign, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that God loves us enough to show us whatever it takes to get us where he wants us to go. Amen. If you serve that God and said, hey, I ain't doing nothing for you, I'll be checking something. Right. Amen. So, hey, hope something's been said to enlighten you, if not, entertain you. Uh, amen. You can laugh at my Ruby's cute jokes. Whatever. I have a song. There you go. She's going to sing a song. If you need prayer tonight, I'd ask you to come pray. Uh, if you're having trouble getting out of where you're at to what God's called you to be, you got to take a first step. You you got to get out. You've got to get out. God has already spoke what you are. And, and, and if you don't know what you are, read the book. Amen. Don't listen to yourself. Read the book. More than conquer. Join out of the throne. And I go on and on with what the Bible says you are. The head, not the tail. And if you don't feel that way, you're not listening to God. You got to get out of it. And there's no better time than right now. No better time. Don't wait. For every day that Gideon stayed in that wine press, the people stayed in oppression. You never know what hinges on you. That's right. See, we, we think this is just us. But it's not. Chris, I'm going to get my mansion in heaven on the streets of gold. And, and my flip, I, what I like is I'm hoping I got some of them uh, wandering in the wilderness flip-flops that never wire out. Hey, y'all can drink about whatever you want. It's my head. I'm doing I'm doing out on the streets of gold with tires that never wear out. <laughs> but you know what? It's not just about me. It's about when I get there and somebody else is going to be there because of something I did. Amen. It lined up with God's plan. That's what it's about. So tonight... As Lynn comes and sings, I'd ask you if you need prayer tonight, you come pray. If you need to get rid of your mindset you have now and trade it in for what God has in store for you, ain't no better time to do it than now. Amen. Do not go home thinking you are not what God made you to be.
when temptation comes my way. Yep. When I cannot stand, I'll fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope. 